Alright, so here I am for coloradotriathlete.com. My name is AJ, and today we are sitting down with professional triathlete Jasmine Onick. She is the two-time U23 U.S. National Triathlon Champion and the two-time U23 International Triathlon uh, Silver Medalist. She's also the two-time USAT Female Triathlete of the Year for the U23 division as well. So I'm going to throw some questions her way and go from there. So to start off, uh, just give us a little bit of background as far as sports you grew up with, um, what you did in high school. Okay. Um, I always ran and swam in high school. Um, ran cross country, swam on the swim team, and then ran track. Um, and then uh, pretty much once I had all, I mean, I'd always been a runner and a swimmer, so then somebody mentioned to me one day, well, why don't you try bike riding and give track on a shot? So that's how. So you kind of already had the, the two sports in there with the swimming and the running. Uh, do you remember what your your first triathlon was or how did you progress into it from there? Yeah, um, I, the, my first triathlon was a dancing triathlon at Cherry Creek Reservoir, yeah, and it was on a, a track mountain bike actually. And so it was just a little sprint, but it was a lot of fun and then um, I got hooked and I found a coach and I upgraded my bike a little each year by year. And how, how old were you when you did that first race? Um, Okay, so you got started yeah. fairly early then, uh -huh. um, and so you've spent your your entire career, I guess, based in Colorado, growing up here. Um, how big an advantage is it for you to train where you live, and you obviously have a good support team? It's got to be a pretty big advantage for you. Yeah, I think it's huge. Um, I kind of get, not territorial, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, there are very few people that actually are from Colorado right. that come to such a great place to use it for training. And um, I kind of I kind of like that I'm one of the few to, to call Colorado my original home. And it's great because I have my parents an hour away. I have people I went to high school with that will still contact me on Facebook and right. say, hey, I just saw you did this. That's great. So you have the support there still. And then just being in Colorado never really gets stale because, I mean, we just had snow yesterday. The weather right. always changes things up. And then... The training's un unbelievable. Um, so, in the in the winter time, obviously in Colorado, not so great for training. Mm -hmm. Do you have a set place that you like to go over the winter, or do you tough it out and um, snowshoe a lot? Yeah, <laughs> I pretty much just stay here, tough it out, um, try to switch things up with skiing, and use use the season to my advantage for training. Okay. But still try still doing the swim, bike, and run as well. Right. Um, and previously, you spent a lot of time at the Olympic Training Center. Uh, recently, though, you, you've moved to Boulder. So has that changed your training at all? Do you still work with the, the Olympic Training Center a little bit? Yeah, um, it's definitely it's a big step to move from the Training Center because it's a great place to start out because you get your food handed to you. It's cooked. It's delicious. You don't have to pay rent. I mean, somebody comes and cleans your room once a, month, uh -huh. once a week. I know. So... Um, it was definitely, it's an adjustment coming to a place like Boulder because you also have to be more scheduled yourself right. and make sure you do get your workouts in because there's so many distractions right. that can pull you in different directions, but um, it's all about finding a good group right. where you are. So, so do you do mostly group training? Do you do the Masters Swim Clubs or do you do a lot of stuff on your own? Um, when I was, last year I was doing a lot of stuff on my own. And then I just recently joined Flat Irons, okay. so that's huge for swimming groups. Right. And um, and then I just recently joined Simon Lessing's training group, so I'm really looking forward to having people to run with and cycle with as well. Okay. All right. So you're kind of mixing it up a little yeah. bit there. Um, and another big change for you this year, um, you've got some new sponsors and stuff. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, it's it's really it's been fun. It's been a learning process too to learn that whole side of marketing yeah. yourself. And, uh, but um, I'm working with K-Swiss and Trek and First Endurance Nutrition Products, um, and they've been really supportive and great. You got to like make your own custom K-Swiss uniform, yeah. so it's pretty, it's pretty fun. And as a short course athlete, you have a hectic travel schedule. You've already been racing in Australia. You're heading to Madrid, correct? Fairly soon. Yeah. Um, so with that sort of travel schedule. What do you do to mitigate kind of the stress of that? Is there anything you bring with you, like a, a must you ha uh, have to have with you or anything of that nature? Yeah, um, I have like this diary. It's not really a diary because I just write notes in it. But in it are three pictures that I like to look at okay. when I'm away from home. So just kind of harnessing your chi or whatnot. 
Right. Are you? Can you would you say you're an expert at bike packing by now with all the? I think I've I think I've gotten pretty good at it. You you find yourself packing your bikes in really small hotel rooms right. like in Europe, so you have to be very efficient in space. You know, know your spatial awareness. Sure. Um, so along that same lines with traveling, where's your your favorite place to race been so far? Um, shoot, I I don't know. I like cooler. I like cooler places. Okay. Vancouver. I I really, really? like Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Really pretty as well. So. Just the temperature, the course, and everything in the yeah. town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and also, you you just recently made your first blog post. You just started that, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that that's kind of well the the you you say your your random thoughts kind of coming together. Yeah. What was that part of like you said learning to market in that, or is it just a way for you to just let it out? Um, I think a little bit of both, but for me, I see it as a way to just let it out. Because okay. you have so many thoughts, you know, you're swimming along just looking at a oh, yeah. black line and all these thoughts come in. And it's just kind of nice to get down on the computer and just, like, vomit all of your, you know, <laughs> just put right. it all out there. And it's very, it, it clears your mind up a little bit, so. Right, and your blog isn't necessarily just about triathlon or your training or anything like that. So it's really, you might learn what you just had for breakfast or... Yeah. Something totally random. Which yeah. It's different than from a lot of blogs. Thanks. Yeah. And yeah. that's, I'm assuming, the way you're you're approaching it. Hopefully, because there are certain blogs that you you stumble upon, and it's kind of like, why 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 am I even reading this right, right. now? And you kind of find yourself getting angry sometimes. <laughs> or, but then there are also blogs where you read it, and you're like, this is really enjoyable. I right. really like what they're saying. You know, I'll revisit this, and so maybe maybe a nice balance. Right. Yeah. Gives you something to just kind of calm down yeah. and get it all out there. Um, now, a lot of athletes, they may not have a, a career path for after a race, you know, but you've talked about starting a granola business with your mother. Yeah. So where does that come from? Is there a background to that? Um, I mean, not really. We just had started making homemade granola, and okay. then she would bring it to her friends at work, and I would bring it to people at the training center. who were like, oh my gosh, this is so good. You should sell this. And I had one mountain bike friend, his name's Sam, he's really, he's very good, and he, he had my granola, and he's like, I can't go back to any other granola, okay. it's, the, it's the best out there, I'll pay anything for it, and so <laughs> we kind of <laughs> were joking about that, so, it's, it's... So you don't have a baking background, I think it's just random granola. Just random granola. Okay. I liked to eat it, so I figured, hey, I'll try to make it. <laughs> <laughs> um... So I guess, yeah, outside of triathlon and, and a potential granola business, when you're not training and racing, what do you do for your downtime? Do you, you know, a lot of athletes, obviously, you've got to sleep, you've got to recover, yeah. but do you tend to, you know, paint or anything of that nature? Um, yeah, I actually, there's this really fun place called Canvas and Cocktails. I don't know if you've heard of it, mm -hmm. um, but you go and you get wine and then you paint. Oh, okay. And it's really cool, and then you get to bring your painting home. Oh, wow. So it's it's a nice way to express yourself, right. and that's different and relaxing. And there's okay. also like color me mine pottery, where you can go and you can paint pottery, and it's the same idea. You can make like your own coffee cups and things like that, and get them fired, and then you have coffee cups. Wow, that you something to take home. So yeah. you have a painting, you have a coffee cup. Yep. You're able mm -hmm. to furnish the house. <laughs> exactly. And how, how long? So how long have you been in Boulder then? Uh, Full time? a little over a year. A little over a year. Mm -hmm. And do you do you find you liking the adjustment? Yeah, I am. Okay. I definitely am. Look more independence from the from the Olympic Training Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's a good step, at least for me, as far as my athletic career was concerned, because I think it's just the next step I had to make. Right, right. Okay, well there you have it. Thank you for sitting down with ColoradoTriathlete.com. Uh, good luck with the rest of your 2010 you. season, and we look forward to hearing great things from you. Thank you. All right.